In this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into a handful of some of the best selling and most intriguing digital infrared night vision monoculars, and we'll be taking a look at some footage from each device in a few different environments and discussing their ease of use, their size and weights, their build quality, and the pros and cons of these devices and piecing it all together to help give you a good idea of which one is best for you. And we've got a nice price range here between $80 all the way up to $360, which represents the budget friendly end of the spectrum when it comes to digital night vision setups. The monoculars we're going to be looking at are the NVG-10 from Wild Game Plus and this did score the best overall in the lineup and also the widest field of view and it is the most expensive coming in right around $360 and this is the only model in the lineup that can also be mounted to a helmet with a fast helmet mount and the proper adapter so it could be set up very well for hands for use which might appeal to some of you depending on your use cases. The Night Fox Cub comes from a respected brand in the digital night vision space and this model is significantly cheaper and does still offer some pretty good performance and it is going to be well suited for mid-range use. The Best Garter WG50 Plus is the bulkiest of the devices here but it is going to give you the best range so if you're mostly observing from a stationary position and need to be able to see far this is going to be the best of the choices here. The Geofi M14K is the most budget friendly by a long shot coming in at around $80 and the performance was actually on par with many of the more expensive units but the build quality and the strength of the IR illuminator were a bit lacking. And finally, the Carson NV250 Aura Plus, which is an incredibly compact unit. And if you want something super lightweight and easy to toss in a bag or even pocket carry, this would be the best one for you. I also created a spreadsheet, which should make it a little easier for you to compare the specs and features of these monoculars. And that will be linked to down in the description below in case you want to check that out. And also links which you can use to purchase the items and help support the channel at no additional cost to you. And before we check out some footage from these devices, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. We're going to jump right in and take Take a look at some footage from these devices and see how the performance stacks up head to head in a few different environments under different magnification with different levels of IR illumination. And for reference, the truck in the parking lot is about 50 meters away. The NVG-10 does have a significantly larger field of view compared to the other devices in the lineup. The Cub and the M14K have a very similar field of view, and while they are tighter, they still give you more compared to the Carson Aura Plus, and the Best Garter's field of view is very narrow, but it's gonna give you the best clarity at distance. Here's some footage from the NVG-10, and this was recorded via Wi-Fi and a screen recorder on my phone. And you can choose between a white and black view or a green view, depending on your preference. And I find that the black and white view provides a little bit more contrast, but the green mode might be a little easier on your eyes for extended periods of time. The NVG-10's video resolution is 1920 by 1080p, and it can record 30 frames per second. And the display resolution is also 1920 by 1080. And one thing you can't see in the video, but you can see on the actual display itself is an electronic gyroscope compass which is useful if you do need to do any kind of navigating. And this is an awesome feature that none of the other devices have. The quality of the video from the NVG-10 is really excellent. And even without the IR illuminator turned on in the settings, it is actually still on at very low power. And when you turn on the illuminator, they are nice and strong and they provide a very wide and evenly diffused illumination. The range of this device is about 100 meters in total darkness and up to about 200 meters in low light conditions. And it has a one times optical zoom and up to a six times digital zoom. In the presence of ambient lighting, it can also keep up just fine. And you are able to detect objects relatively well at range, but when you do zoom in, it does get a bit grainy and it is tougher to focus. And there's definitely some better options in the lineup if long range is an important consideration for you. Here's some footage from the Cub, and this is a more longer range setup than the one we looked at previously. And although the footage is a bit more grainier, it is better than the NVG-10 at further magnification levels. When you increase the IR illumination levels, the graininess seems to improve, and the IR illuminators are also well powered on this device. And the range rating of 150 meters from Nightbox seems reasonable, if not slightly understated. It has three times optical zoom and two times digital zoom and a 10 degree field of view. And the Cub also does well in the presence of ambient lighting and it does fill in light where needed. And under these conditions, the quality of the video is actually pretty good. And the range of this device is impressive considering its size. But when you do start to zoom in digitally, you start to lose quite a bit of clarity. But the nice thing is there is a tripod mount, which will definitely help you get the best range from this device. Even without the IR mode turned on, the device does much better than the naked eye and the colors are better and things are much more well illuminated. This is the Best Garter WG50 Plus and this is definitely the best option for those of you looking for a long range monocular setup. The max range on this device is 350 meters and it can record 1920 by 1080p. 
and there's 3.5 times optical zoom and up to three times digital zoom. And you can record directly to an SD card or there's also a Wi-Fi feature which you can use to display the video on your phone. The soccer goal that's about 75 yards away looks like it's just a few feet away and the image quality is very sharp. I do think the IR illuminator is slightly underpowered for the setup and doesn't quite keep up with the magnification levels as well as it could. And while there is some IR illumination, it would definitely benefit from more, which would help you see better even further. Now we're back in the presence of ambient lighting, and as you can see, this device really excels at range. And when we do go in with digital zoom, it definitely does bring us closer. However, at this range, the image quality definitely suffers, and it's super grainy, and I don't think you stand to benefit all that much from the digital zoom at this level. Anyways, I'm really impressed with the optical zoom on this device, and the clarity is really good. And I also want to show you guys some footage from the Luna Optics B50 Pro, which you can learn more about in my night vision binocular video. And this is a $900 unit and the clarity and range of these devices are definitely comparable under these conditions. The Geoffy M14K is the budget friendly option. And I must say that I'm pretty impressed by how it performs. And this is the only device in the lineup that can record in 4K FHD. One thing that does jump out to me about this unit is that the IR illuminator is definitely one of the weaker ones and it doesn't do all that well at its lower levels and you really need to crank it up to be able to see well in the dark and even when it is cranked up it's definitely the weakest of the bunch so you might want to consider some supplemental IR lighting if you're serious about this setup and you want to be able to see anywhere close to the 300 meter range that's stated on the product page. One thing that's definitely going well for it is the video quality, which is pretty good. And it does seem to stack up pretty close in comparison to the Night Fox Cub, which is impressive considering how much cheaper the device is. And in the presence of ambient lighting, the performance is nearly identical. I'm not sure where the 10 times optical and eight times digital ratings come from, and the magnification is nowhere near those levels, but I am I'm impressed with the range nonetheless. The digital magnification isn't that strong and you do start to get pretty grainy image as soon as you start to zoom. So there's not gonna be much benefit from doing that. The Carson NV250 Aura Plus actually has pretty impressive range for its size and the IR illumination levels are really good too. The video quality is a bit grainy with 640 by 480 pixels, which is VGA and probably the weakest in the lineup. And there isn't a whole lot of contrast to the image either, but it does record directly to an SD card. The IR illuminators are probably overpowered and give you slightly more IR light than needed and they deserve to be paired with a device with better image quality. Again, I'm pretty impressed with the range of this device and it does do well in the presence of ambient light sources. You can zoom in digitally with this device, but when you do, you start to lose the quality of the image and like most of the other devices, there isn't all that much to be gained from doing this. Max range on the Aura Plus is about 120 meters and it has two times optical zoom and two to four times digital zoom. Now we'll take a few minutes to talk about how easy it is to use these devices. And we'll start off with the NVG10, which is the most complex monocular in the group. If you just wanna set it up to be able to see, it is relatively easy, but there are only three different buttons. So you do have to do some double pressing and messing around with them to figure out how to do things like zoom, record video, adjust the IR and change colors. The Wi-Fi recording feature is a bit more tricky and you will need to pair the device with your phone. And you'll also have to rely on third-party apps to get this feature running. And I have had the most success with the BM1 Cam app, but you will also need to employ some type of screen recording software if you wanna be able to record video. You can hold this device in your hand or mount it to a helmet, but there is no tripod mount. The Night Fox Cub probably has the best button configuration and UI of the monoculars in the lineup. And it's really easy to power on the device, adjust the IR level and record video and it does record directly to a micro SD card, which is convenient, and having a built-in tripod mount is a big plus. The Best Guard or WG50 Plus is relatively easy to use, and most of the features can be accessed with the buttons on top, and there are dedicated buttons for activating many of the features like color and positive and negative zoom adjustments, and it doesn't take that much to master the fundamentals of the controls. And this one also has a tripod mount as well, which is gonna be important if you wanna take good quality video that isn't shaky. The Geoffy M14K is probably the next most easy to use right after the Night Fox Cub, and the button configuration is intuitive and easy to get the hang of. The buttons do feel pretty cheap, however, this is more of a build quality issue, and we will be addressing that in the next section. 
but it does have a tripod mount as well. The Carson NV250 Aura Plus is not quite as easy as most of the other monoculars here, as you do have to employ some double button pressing tactics, but they are well labeled and it won't take you too long to get the hang of it, but there isn't any tripod mount on this device. Now we've got all the monoculars lined up by size and weight, and when it comes to size, you can't beat the Aura Plus, which is considerably smaller and more lightweight than all the rest of the monoculars in the lineup. The NVG10, the Cub, and the M14K are all relatively close enough in size and weight, and there's no major difference between these devices, but the Best Garter WG50 Plus is the biggest and the heaviest by a long shot, and if you aren't walking too far with it or you're using a tripod to hold it, this might not be an issue for you, but if you do plan on just holding it in your hands, you're definitely going to notice the weightiness of this device pretty quickly, and it does start to feel heavy fast, and the other monoculars are much more compact and would be considerably easier to hold for extended periods of time. With regards to build quality, the winner of the group is definitely the NVG10, which has a very sturdy housing and an IP66 rating, and everything from the way the buttons feel to the ease of adjustment of the focus just feels top notch. The Best Carter WG50 Plus is in the similar ballpark of the NVG10, but not quite as good, but it does feel quite sturdy for its size, and the buttons have a good feel to them, and they definitely use good quality optics, which is nice to see. The Night Fox Cub comes in close behind in build quality, and it does have some nice looking design aesthetics, and the buttons are very firm and responsive, which is always a good sign. The Geoffy M14K definitely feels like the cheapest product in the lineup, and some of the buttons don't even click when you push them, but they do still work, and this one definitely feels like the one that would not hold up well to being dropped. The Carson NV250 Aura Plus has an okay build quality, but it's nothing special, and I put it pretty close to the Cub, but the buttons do feel pretty good on this one too. Now we'll take a minute to discuss the battery type and charging options for each of these devices. The Wild Game Plus NVG10 comes with a rechargeable 18650 battery, and this is very easy to replace, but there is no onboard charger, so you will need a dedicated charger to be able to charge up the battery. The Best Garter WD50 Plus runs on four AA batteries, and the Carson Aura Plus runs on three AAA batteries, and these are both very convenient and easy to replace, and they're very common battery types. The Night Fox Cub and the Geofi M14K both have built-in batteries and charge via USB-C cables, which is nice, but the downside is you can't swap out batteries, which would render both of these devices useless if they don't have power, unless you're able to get in a charge. So I put all the performance and specs data together and gave each one a score out of 100 and plotted them on this chart so you can get a better idea of their true value. I gave them a score out of 30 on their video quality, which factored in the clarity of the video, a range score out of 20 based on their effective usable distance, an ease of use score out of 10 based on how easy it is to use the device and manipulate the UI in the field, a score out of 20 on their size and weight, and a score out of 20 on their build quality, and totaled them all up and gave them a final score out of 100, and on the x-axis you'll see how well they scored, and on the y-axis you'll see their price. The NVG10 was the highest scoring in the lineup with a grand total of 74 points, and it is also the most expensive. It scored well in pretty much every category with the exception of ease of use, where it did suffer, but if you aren't too concerned about video recording, then this won't be an issue. Next in line was actually the Night Fox Cub with a total of 67 points, and this was one of the most affordable options, which really impressed me, and it had great video quality and decent range, and it was relatively compact, and it was very close in score with the Best Garter WG50+, Plus, which came in at a score of 66 points, and although this one definitely outperformed the Cub in terms of video quality and range, its bulkiness was the factor that cost it the most points. Next up we've got the Geofi M14K with 56 points, which suffered the greatest loss of points. Its build quality, range, and weak IR illuminator, but aside from that it did pretty well for the price. And if you just need something for short distances, it will probably be suitable. And finally the Carson Aura Plus received the same score with 56 points, and it was the best in terms of size and weight, and it's incredibly compact, and it did have a decent IR illuminator, but the main deductions were due to the video quality being a bit more grainy than the others, and the build quality being on the lower end. Thanks so much for watching the video, and if you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And again, if you want to pick up any of these items and help support the channel, you can find a link down in the description below.